An ancient western hemlock tree stands in the same place it has for centuries along the Grays River. If this tree could talk, it could tell you the story of a place unique to the world, an iconic northwest forest. This tree has witnessed changes all around it. The ancient history of old forests, the recent history of working forests, it stands as a testament to the past, present, and future. Seeing that tree, it, it feels a little bit like discovery, and it feels a little bit like uh, relief. We were able to core the tree and do a nutrient analysis or an isotope analysis of what composed that tree. We would find ocean and we would find salmon. You'd see the whole history of salmon in this tree over the last 250 years. And that tree then marks the change of what's happening not just in the forest, but what's happening in the river. The Lower Columbia had a vibrant culture and community of indigenous peoples from the coast all the way upriver. European settlers, many from the Scandinavian countries, came in the mid-1800s. In the 1900s, fishing, farming, and forests were kind of three pillars of the communities here. Logging slowly advanced into this watershed, really picking up in the 1940s. It's a little bit of a puzzle to me why that tree is still standing. All the trees around it were cut, but they chose to, to leave it for some reason. Well, I suspect that hemlock may be a witness tree. Witness trees were large trees that were situated very close to the survey lines on the land. When the hills were logged, the logging crews had to be very careful to leave the witness trees standing because they had to be able to know where the corners of the sections were. The tree would have witnessed generations and generations of pumas and eagles and the deer and the elk and all the other animals going through. But it wasn't too long until it would have started to see big changes all around it as the logging moved in more and more. And so I would say that big old hemlock has probably seen at least four cuts of timber all around it in the 200 years it's been there. So ecosystems are really complex. They're all interconnected. And so you have trees, you have salmon, you have water, you have other wildlife species, and you can't pull apart one without impacting the others. A lot of the forest land in this watershed is owned and managed for timber interests. With logging, the tree canopy cover changes, the size of the trees, the character of the soil. As the old growth came off, the runoff increased. And so you have more water coming off the watershed faster. It's carrying more sediment. It's carrying it downstream to where people live. And so it erodes banks, it floods, it pushes into people's property. I think the greatest challenge for our generation or our lifetime is going to be mitigating for and adapting to climate change. And with that, there's going to be you know, reducing emissions, but also sequestering the carbon stored in the atmosphere. Forests play a huge role in that. And land trusts have this ability to buy land and let the forest grow and sequester carbon for forever. And so that's a really important role that land trusts can play that not many other people can. What the land trust can do is to help to build back the texture and the long-term viability of the soils, the forest components, and the animal communities that live in the older forests. It'll take time, but it has to start somewhere. So to find a tree or a grove of trees like this is very special. One, it gives us an indication into the past, and it also gives us confidence of what we can do with conservation management. And also, we just know that the habitat still is here. You know, these trees are really important for marble murrelet. It's really important if we're going to recover the species that nesting habitat is protected and expanded. If you lose this tree, it's just one more tree, right? But it's the last of not very many trees remaining. And so how many more trees like this can we afford to lose before systems start to unravel and can't be put back together again? It may seem like a lone sentinel in the forest, but this tree is deeply interconnected to a broader web of life, both beneath its canopy and far beyond. It gives nourishment, shade, and shelter. 
We believe in resilient, healthy ecosystems that balance forestry, recreation, and habitat. Through collaboration with local communities and conservation, young forests will continue the work of ancient trees like this hemlock. Be like an ancient tree in the forest. Give generously.